In this video, we're going to talk about the SAGE command, Plot3D, and its options. Plot3D is the basic plot command for plotting in three dimensions. And one of the nice things about plotting in three dimensions in SAGE is that you can click and drag the graphs to rotate them. The basic command, Plot3D, has three parameters. The function in two variables, the declaration of the first variable and its range. This will be plotted on the left axis. The declaration of the second variable and its range, which will be plotted on the right axis. So Plot3D plots an explicit function of two independent Cartesian variables in a 3D plot. We must declare our two variables, define the function, and give their ranges. Everything else is optional, and we will look at these options. There's a reference on the SAGE page itself. In our first use of Plot3D, we're going to use only the required elements. Here we've declared our variables x and y, and then here we have our Plot3D open parenthesis, a function in two variables. Here it's y cubed minus x. Our first variable is x with its range 0 to 3, so that will be on the left axis. And our second variable is y from minus 1 to 1, so y will be plotted on the right axis. Let's see our graph. Here it is. Notice the default color is blue and it's very opaque, so the opacity is 1. Here's the x-axis, the left axis from 0 to 3, and the right axis from minus 1 to 1. And on those ranges, we get z from minus 4 to 1. We're going to click here. Notice the change in the cursor, and that means we can rotate. We can click in different places and get a different kind of rotation. So when you want it to revert, just evaluate it again. Next plot. Our second plot, and it shows you how to use the command show, says if you name the plot, if you name the plot, then you must use the command show in order to plot the plot. And also, you can name the variables whatever you want, but they are always Cartesian, rectangular, with plot 3D. So just for the fun of it, I have named variables rho and phi, like polar coordinates, but because this is plot 3D, it will plot them Cartesian. So here we've de declared our variables, rho and phi, and then we've defined our function, phi cubed minus rho. So that's the same function as above because it's going, we're going to use Cartesian coordinates. And here we've actually written rho 1 to be 0 and rho 2 to be 3. And here's s, or naming our plot, equal to plot 3D, f, there's our function, and then rho is our first variable, so it will be on the left axis. Rho 1 to rho 2 is our range. And then phi from minus 1 to 1. If we just stopped here and did evaluate, it would evaluate it fine, but it would not plot it. We must say show s and then evaluate. And we get exactly the same plot. One of the nice things about using the command show is that you can define and show more than one plot using show. You can see lots of graphs at the end of this SAGE file with more options for this. Here we've gone back to variables x and y, and our first plot, which we've now named S1, is our plot that we've been doing all the time. And then we have a second plot where we're just going to plot the plane z equal to y and in the same range. Here we are using the option comma color equal to quotations red. And then in order to show both of these plots, we say show S1 plus S2. So this is the addition operator here. Let's see what this looks like. So the blue is our standard plot that we've used so far twice. And the red is the plane Z equal to Y. And of course, we can rotate this to see it. Next. I want to emphasize that the order that you put the ranges is important. The first variable named in the range is the left axis. The second variable is the right axis. It doesn't matter what you call them or in what order you declare them. Been there, got burned. We reverse the order of the ranges here so that you can see this effect. So here we have declared x and then y. Here we have the same function y cubed minus x. And what we did was we reversed the position of these two things. And now the plot has been inverted. Here's 
what was y is now x. <laughs> what, is, what was x is now on the y-axis. So be, be careful of the order in which you write the ranges because the first one will go on the left or x-axis and the second one will go on the right or y-axis. Next. Now we have seen the defaults are color equal to blue and opacity equal to 1, which is completely opaque, and the figure size equal to 4. That's the size we saw. Here we have our declaration of our variables, our same plot, y cubed minus x. We put them in the right order now. Color equal to red, as we had once before. And now opacity is between 0 and 1. We have opacity equal to 0 0.3, comma. This continues. I mean, I haven't hit enter here and our figure size equal 2. And we can see that it is indeed transparent. It is smaller, that's the figure size, and it's red. Next, the default aspect ratio, there's an underscore there, seems to be fitted into the figure size and aspect ratio and figure size are related. I haven't quite worked that out, so you'll have to try different things. So here we've done the same thing as before, except we've added aspect ratio equal to, notice these are brackets, not parentheses, 1, 1, 1, which draws your figure to scale. If you want to make your colors precise, you can use the command RGB color instead of color. And so RGB color equal to parentheses 0, 0, 0 is the same as color equal to black. RGB color equal to 111 is the real RGB of 255, 255, 255, or white. It won't be white. If you want to make it invisible, you must use opacity equal to zero. So here we're going to make our figure green and revert to default figure size 4. So the same things that we had before, we have the same function, RGB color, now we have zero. 0 0.60. So if you multiply 0 0.6 times 255, you'll get zero, the RGB color of 0, 0153, 0. Uh, we're we've increased our opacity, so it's going to be a little less transparent, and we have left our aspect ratio at 1, 1, 1. Let's see that. So here we are. It, you can see that it's a little less transparent, more opaque. And now you can see the aspect ratio is 1, 1, 1. That is, the scale is the same on x, y, and z. Next, by default, frame is equal to true. That's the box. So if you declare frame equal to false, as you can see, there's no box. So here is the same image as before, but no box. Just want to point out that mesh equal to false is the default, but mesh equal to true does not. Similarly, dots equal to false is the default, but if you put in dots equal to true, you will still not see the dots at the grid points. And the third thing that wasn't working is plot points. It's automatic. It's hard to tell if it's working because you can't see the mesh, but as I understand it, this is also a known problem that it does not work. Now, I don't know how the following works. I found it at this reference. I do know you need both options. So you need adaptive equal to true and color equal to something like red yellow. It's fun to try different things, so go ahead and try it, but you do need both the option adaptive and the option color. And notice the brackets here and the quotation marks. And this is what you get, which is pretty cool. And one last one is that you can do there's options on that web page, and here is an option that you can try. Oh, by the way, the axis equal to false is the default, but axis equal to true is not really very helpful. I will show it to you. So here we have axis equal to true, and this is what you get, which I found completely unuseful. So when I need axes, I draw the lines myself. And in case you are interested in how I do draw the lines myself, I use parametric plot and then use the vector t00 for x, 0t0 for y, and 00t for z. I show my original plot and the three axes, and this is what I get, which I find to be much more useful. And here is where I have also plotted a point in 3D. 
on here so you can see its size and its color is light green here it is in case you want to try that